Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a top 5 video for you guys, another lore video on GTA San Andreas. And if you guys enjoy these lore videos, please do drop a like because it does help me to make more content like this. But on this video, we are going to be doing the top 5 stupidest and dumbest things that CJ has done. Now this is different than, you know, top 5 good things he's done, top 5 um, evil things he's done. And there's also a video that I made a long time ago, which was oh, about a year ago I should say, where it was top 5 things that make no sense in the storyline in GTA San Andreas. That's a little bit different than, th than this one, because in that one we were covering things that just generally did not make any kind of sense story-wise logic in the game. Here we're focusing specifically on CJ and some dumb things that he did, which don't make any sense. Now CJ did do some really smart things in the storyline, which I probably will have a follow-up video, top 5 smartest things that CJ has done, but in this one we're going to be covering the top 5 dumbest things that CJ has done. So anyways, let's start off the video, top 5 dumbest things that CJ has done in GTA San Andreas. Starting off at number 5, we are planning the casino heist from the small maintenance room. Woozy? Oh, Carl. You could at least turn the lights on. Oh, I thought I had. But this window here must let some light in. Yeah, this perfect right here. This what we gonna plan the heist at. Anyone else coming? Nah. Couldn't we have done this in my office? You gotta have a secret place to plan shit like this. That's just how it's done. Okay, okay. I see where you're coming from. So, what do we do? I guess we gotta make a plan. Speaking of plans, do you have the layout to Caligula's Casino? Shit. Nah. I guess I gotta go get one. Now, the reason that this is a bad idea is because this maintenance room is, as we can see from the story, is easily accessible. A lot of people keep going in and out, and there's, they don't seem like they're locking the door at all. So anybody can just walk into this maintenance room and overhear exactly what they're doing. And they're planning on robbing Caligula's Casino. They're planning on robbing the Mafia's Casino. So when you're planning a heist like this, you want to have a specific circle of people that you highly trust in that. And nobody else. Nobody else that needs to know about this should know about this. And you, you shouldn't have a very tiny group. But it shouldn't be a massive group either, because the more people that know about a heist like this, the more that something can go wrong. The more that information can get out, the more that police can find out about it, or even the Leones could find out about it, the Mafia could find out about it. It does work out in the end, and nothing goes wrong. That's why this is at the beginning of this list, because nothing bad did end up happening, but it was a dumb idea. Now, why does CJ actually end up planning from this room in the first place? The reason CJ plans it from this room is because CJ has never actually planned a heist. He really has no experience doing such a thing like that. He tells Woozy, you gotta have a secret room to plan stuff like this. It's just how it is. He's talking about movies. He's been seeing a lot of movies, movies that are planning in a specific room, and so he thinks it's just like a movie. And we can see later on, one of Woozy's guys actually does end up coming into the room. Now, I know you're blind, man, but you gotta see this. Very clever. So what's the prognosis? Is this just gonna be extremely difficult or next to impossible? Hear me out on this, homie. All right, the cash room is on the bottom level. There's a bunch of rooms and a tunnel under the whole building with access to the casino floors at either end of the complex. All right? Now, security consists of CCTV, a key code access, and in places, a swipe card. Hey, are you pointing again? Oh, my bad. Have it. Ah, don't worry. It's good practice for when we finally get a crew in on yeah, this. Yeah, I know. Hey, boss, this arrived for CCTV. Hey, 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 hey! Damn, man! Now we've seen the plan. Well? Then we've got our first recruit. Come on in and shut the door. All right, cool. This is the security card reader that Zero sent over. Now all we need to do is get one of those cards. Fortunately, this is one of the Woozy's guys that he trusts, so nothing really bad happens. However, later on, a crowd does end up uh, building up outside the room. Seem impossible to keep a secret around here. I would have thought the size of the room would keep the numbers down. Hey, speak up! We can't hear you back here! I appreciate your input, but please, fuck off! What'd he say? <laughs> he said fuck off. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, what are you still doing here? I live here. Oh, okay, you can stay. Great. Hey, where's the coffee and donuts? Okay, look, I'm gonna go shut off the city's power source. Woozy, look after these fools for me. Okay, now, 
the important thing to remember with a plan like this is that nothing can go wrong. So the scenes with the maintenance room were kind of funny, they were great scenes, but in reality it was just a bad place to plan a heist. I'm not saying they should have even planned it in Woozy's um, office, though Woozy's office actually would have been a better place to plan a, a, the heist, because a lot less people would have been coming in and out of, out of the office, meaning that there's a much less chance of something going wrong, much less chance of the heist plans actually getting leaked out. Next at number four, we have stealing four bikes instead of two. And I want to thank my friend Anomalous Scientist. He reminded me of this mission and just reminded me of how ridiculous this situation was. I'll link his channel down below. All right, here's the plan. It's all about the art of deception. While I get as much heat on me as possible, y'all get away with the green. Question, how does the Mafia normally move cash out of Caligula's? Bingo. Stripes of Mr. Zero here. Hey, good job, you little <laughs> ass Ow. kisser. Ow. So, we gonna steal ourselves an armored car and respray it so it looks like one of the regular trucks. What about the police escorts? Whenever they move cash around, they use police motorcycles as outriders. Exactly what I was thinking. Come on, come with me, and we gonna go get some cop wheels. You get the packer, hit the Julius throughway, and keep moving. I'll steal the bikes and get them to you. Now, I didn't want to mention the casino heist repeatedly, but most of the dumb things that actually end up happening revolve around the casino heist. So I actually talked about how this mission actually made no sense last year, Cop Wheels, in which you're stealing um, these police bikes, but you have to steal these specific police bikes, and you cannot actually steal any of the police bikes before the mission, so no police bikes will actually spawn. But the reason that this is actually stupid here is because for the casino heist, they actually only need two bikes. Look at this scene right here. I've unloaded the police bikes. Everybody in. You two, change into your police uniforms. So now they're gonna leave the casino, making it look like it's the regular drop-off with the van. That was the point of getting the um the police um the police bikes. Get to the service el el or elevator. Remember, you are the decoy. <laughs> we gotta Zero, wait. Zero, will you hide? I didn't mean to tell Berkeley. It just kind of came out. Is all. But even though they only need two bikes, for some reason in this mission, CJ actually ends up stealing four bikes, and one bike, um, a, a cop is trying to arrest a drunk guy, another one, a cop is actually trying to pull over a bunch of bikers, another one's in front of a police station, so CJ goes to this extra effort to steal two extra motorcycles when he only needed really two for the heist. I don't know what the other two were needed for. Next at number three, we have CJ's stupid Sky Crane helicopter plan. Okay, we got the bikes and Woozy taking care of the uniforms. Now we just gotta get an armored van and respray it with the Caligula's Casino logo. Why don't we steal one while it's on its rounds? That way we can make some money too. Nah, I don't wanna get the crew caught up in some street level jack and it could get up. Um, I, I have an idea. Um, have you ever seen those helicopters they use to lift heavy loads? Yeah, they call them sky cranes. We could lift the whole truck and take them to someplace safe. Then we need to steal a sky crane. Unfortunately, I'm not a pilot. Uh, me neither. Hey, don't look at me. Or me. Shit. I'll fly it then. We could respray it at the airstrip. Yeah, Carl. It'll be just like fighting Berkeley, only bigger. Yeah, thanks for that. Now, I didn't want to keep mentioning the casino heist, but like I said, most of the dumb things happen during the casino heist, and it's actually the last time I'm mentioning it here in this video. Number two and number one aren't related to the casino heist. Uh, but I also mentioned this actually in my video. It was actually number one in my video a year ago, in which I talked about the top five things that make no sense in GTA San Andreas. Now, at that point, I talked about how this mission makes no sense, but not only does this mission make no sense, this whole plot is just stupid. The whole idea behind this plan is just so ridiculous and so dumb. Remember what CJ actually says during the mission. He says, nah, I don't want to get the crew caught up in some street level jacking. It could get ugly. So then instead of the crew st stealing the armored truck as it's making its rounds, which actually would have been a lot more simple, CJ decides instead of that's too messy. So he decides to go to the National Guard Depot, fight his way through the National Guard Depot, kill dozens of soldiers, fight to the roof, 
When he fights at a roof, he actually ends up shooting down two attack helicopters, which are actually based on the Apache helicopter. They're called the Hunters in GTA San Andreas. Same helicopter that's also in GTA Online. So he kills a bunch of soldiers, breaking into this depot, shoots down these two attack helicopters, then steals the Sky Crane, then he flies all the way on the other side of the city, picks up the armored truck, and then flies it all the way, all the way to the, uh, to the airstrip and drops it off there. Wouldn't it have been just much more simple to just climb the fence or break into the compound and actually steal the armored truck as it was suggested in the beginning by Woozy? But no, CJ actually came up with this ridiculous plan. The only thing that was actually a benefit in this plan was that they actually had gotten a sky crane for CJ's um, airfield. But other than that, this whole plan is just stupid. Now, it was number one in my video last year uh, for things that make no sense. It's just stupid. It's just ridiculous. What kind of plan is this? Something that should have been simple, CJ turned and made it just so complicated. It was just ridiculous. Number two is meeting Tenpenny in the desert. So right after the mission Intensive Care, a crash logo actually appears on the map, and I suspect that there was actually an additional phone call in this mission, something that Rockstar did not add in, because the way that this, this mission actually pops up never really made much sense to me. Why this why this mission just pops up all of a sudden, there's, CJ has never been to this house before, how does he know that Crash is at this house, what is Crash doing at Los Venturas, so I think, I personally think that there was something cut before this mission, uh, because this, the logic for it doesn't make sense, but anyways, what's so stupid about meeting Tenpenny in the desert, so in this mission, Tenpenny threatens CJ and tells him that he needs him to get rid of a DEA officer who's meeting an FBI officer, and he needs to retrieve a dossier. Hello, Carl. Been a long time, huh? Yeah, I was starting to miss you guys. Now, why don't I believe you? Get over here! Now, things have developed since the last time we met. Despite our best efforts, the gig's nearly up. I'm sure you'll find some way to keep your badge. Your kind always do. You still don't get it, do you, Carl? This ain't about keeping some fucking badge! Hey, listen to the man. We all the same, Carl, you, me. We all trying to pull ourselves out of the hole. Somebody steps on me, I gotta step on you. Where's Hernandez with that fucking meat? He's been gone too long, Tenpenny. <laughs> Getting a little edgy, fellas? <coughs> how you like that, you piece of shit? <coughs> that give you any idea how edgy I am? Whoa! <coughs> Get up, bitch! You paying attention? Now there's a ruined town out west of here. Aldea Malvada. And there's some piece of shit DEA officer meeting with an FBI agent with a dossier. Now you get the dossier and you make both of them disappear. Now, the reason that CJ has been doing these things is because he has been threatened by Tenpenny since the start of the game. Remember that Tenpenny threatened to pin Officer Pendleberry's murder on him if he didn't uh, listen to him and do whatever Tenpenny told him to do. Well, what do we got here? This is a weapon, Officer Pulaski, that was used to gun down a police officer not 10 minutes ago. Officer Pendleberry, a fine man, I might add. You work fast, nigga. You know I just got off the plane. Well, that's a good thing we found you and retrieved the murder weapon. That ain't my gun. Don't bullshit me, Carl. Yeah, don't bullshit him, Carl. What the fuck you want from me this time? When we want you, we'll find you. In the meantime, try not to gun down any more officers of the law. <laughs> Y'all can't leave me here. This ball is country. I thought you said you was innocent, Carl. But you don't bang. This is car 58. See you around like a donut, what? Carl. <laughs> Officer Pendlebury's down. We'll be right over. Hernandez. That. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Additionally, Tenpenny also threatened CJ's brother Sweet in prison and told him that Sweet would be on Abala's block if, ten if he didn't listen to Tenpenny. For once, let's let the kid do something good with his useless life. He's gonna help us with the fight against crime. Right, Carl? Yeah. By any means necessary. Now you stay the fuck away from smoke and stay the fuck away from us. Otherwise, Sweet's gonna find himself on a baller's block getting in touch with his feminine side. 
Hey, Hernandez, you gonna Come piss in. all day? Get your hands off me, man. For some reason, we've got a little problem with a former friend of ours. He seems to disagree with some of our methods. No, who could do that? Yeah, you'll never find anybody as fork-tongued as this snake-ass bastard. Soon as he gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar, he'll whistle any tune internal affairs wants him to. See, they got him hiding up Mount Chiliad someplace, so they can manipulate his testimony any way they want to. I want you to pay him a little visit, Carl, and destroy all his evidence before he testifies. Sort this out, Carl, so Officer Tenpenny can sleep easy at night. Man, we want evidence he ain't gonna talk. Now, what I think is stupid about this mission is a few things. Number one is, why does CJ go and help crash out in the first place? Because he really has no obligation at this point anymore, because Torino actually promised him that he would protect Sweet in prison, and on top of that, uh, Torino would probably protect CJ as well, because he needs CJ to do these jobs for him. Fat moon, break your heart, over and out. Carl, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah, I'll do you a proper injury, man. What you knowing about my brother? <laughs> Relax. He's in prison upstate. D-Wing, cell 13. To the left, I got a child killer who wants to rip his throat out. To the right of him, I got a white supremacist who wants to eat his heart, to be precise. Now, don't worry. Tenpenny and Pulaski are really relatively benign, unless, of course, you're a family member of Officer Pendleberry, whom they shot when he threatened to expose them, but you do know all about that, right? <laughs> Dang! Wow. Hey, man, how you know all this stuff, man? And won't you stop it? You just don't understand, do you, kid? Look, it's all white knights and heroes. We have to make decisions, kid. You know, I try to set bad people on other bad people, and sometimes I let good guys die. He's your brother, but to me, he's just collateral. It's a very delicate decision. Well, at least he's honest about his position. Over here, you got all the scumbags inside the country. And over here, you got all the scumbags outside the country. And me and my colleagues, we're the fucking pivot. Keep the government in work. Which reminds me, come here, okay? I need you to head over here in the buggy outside, okay? Okay, let off a flare. We got some precious cargo needs collected. Hey, hold up. What about my brother and all that shit you was talking hey, about? Hey, don't worry. Sweet's just fine. He gets touched. A prison guard goes home and finds that his wife and kids have been murdered. Everything's under control. Wow. We'll talk later. Now, come on, get out of here. Well, if it makes him sleep better at night, I guess. Hey, man, what did you want? Is you gonna free my brother? No, not now. And here's a little news flash. I said that to get you to do something for me. Man, you real fucked up. But the shocker is, we are gonna look after him. Because I need him alive as much as you do. Oh, thanks. Now, I know what some people are going to say. Some people are going to say, but, but professional. CJ didn't know that Torino was trustworthy. He didn't know that Torino was really going to protect him and Sweet from Crash. That is true. I will concede that he didn't know that. But even if that is the case, even if that is the case and he didn't know if he could trust Torino and he had to do this for Tenpenny, why does he still meet him in the desert? That's the thing I didn't make, uh, didn't understand. Just listen to the phone call that Tenpenny says when he says we need to meet with you. The way that Tenpenny talks in that phone call, it's so obvious that he's gonna kill CJ. Carl, you get that dossier? Yeah, I got the files. What you want me to do with them? Well, we need to meet up someplace quiet and take care of things. There's a ghost town, Las Brujas in the Devil's Castle. You know it? Yeah, I'll find it. I know you will. I'll see you there. Carl. Why CJ goes to meet with them, I did not understand. CJ could have just said on the phone, no, I'm not meeting you there, here's the drop off, I'm gonna leave the, uh, leave the dossier here, and I'm just gonna go. Why does CJ hang around the town? He could have just left the dossier there. Why he hangs around, I have no idea. And then it leads to this scene. Hey, everything cool now? I don't know, Carl. Eddie? Ah, our boy's done good. You snitch piece of shit! You Vato asshole! You sold us out! Time to dig, Carl. You take care of things. Huh? Where are you going? To get drunk and get laid. You got a problem with that? No, Frank, relax. Good. I'll see you back at the precinct. 
And I'll see you in the next life, Carl. That's good. That's deep enough for two. Eddie, Tampenny's just using you. He's using all of us. You're the next one he's gonna silence, man. Shut the fuck up, scum! And it's Officer Pulaski to you! Fuck the guy! So I just personally never understood that. Why doesn't he just leave the dossier there and just tell Tenpenny, okay, that's it, we're done? Why does he insist on staying there? He's just putting himself at more risk. You, you're dealing with an extremely corrupt cop, and corrupt cops are some of the most dangerous individuals out there. Sometimes they're even worse than the actual gangsters, when they technically are gangsters with badges. But the point that I'm making is that corrupt cops know how the system works, and so they're going to try to get rid of everything that can be used against them in a case. This includes evidence and witnesses and so when they don't need cj anymore it's only a matter of time until they're gonna kill him to get rid of him i don't know how cj didn't understand this i just think it was personally stupid going to meet tenpenny in the desert and also when torino was possibly protecting him and sweet and number one the stupidest thing that cj ever did is going to see johnny sendako after scaring him half to death diarrhea cool and yeah. uh, who's this how you doing johnny it's fucking him it's him oh. Oh my head. Oh god. It's him. It, oh! My heart. My heart. Damn, that nigga fucked up. So basically what happens in the uh, Las Venturas chapter of the story is that the Sindaco family is actually trying to move in on the Four Dragons Casino, and so they've been smashing up slot machines, they've been also making counterfeit chips. What happens is Johnny Sindaco gets caught by the triads, and instead of um, killing him, CJ has the idea of getting information to find out what family it is, because at this point CJ doesn't know it's the Sindaco family that's causing the Four Dragons Casino problems. CJ has the idea to strap him to the hood of a car. Partner. Sound like we got a deal then. Boss! The boys found some thugs trying to smash one of the deliveries. We caught one of them. Get rid of him. Hey, wait! Hold up, hold up, come here. Whoever's behind this, we need to let them know that they're dealing with full-fledged psychos. <laughs> Time to the front of the car, then you sweat it out a little, and I'll be out there in a little while. See if we can make this guy squeal. That's my call. Hey, hey, who the fuck? Who are you? One time, huh? You know what? I think we're gonna take a little drive. What are you fucking stupid? I'm not joking here. Untie me, motherfucker. Nah, I think I'm gonna leave you right where you are. Now at this point, CJ scares Johnny Sindaco driving on the wrong side of the road, driving near traffic, driving really fast to get information on him. This terrifies Johnny Sindaco, and eventually he spills the beans. You're gonna kill both of us, oh my god, I'm still alive! The family will make you pay for this! Which family? The Sindaco family, you idiot! That's all I wanted to hear. What? Oh shit! This puts Johnny into a coma. He gets put into a coma for about a week or a few days, he wakes up from the coma, and then afterwards, CJ, when he's at the Caligula's Casino, he's talking to Ken Rosenberg, and Ken Rosenberg explains the situation to him, and tells him that Johnny has to survive, or else the families are gonna blame him for it, and he's gonna end up getting whacked. So CJ actually ends up trying to save the guy who, who he nearly scared half to death. So here I am, about to try and rescue some guy and scared half to death. If he wake up through all this, I'm screwed. Now this part at least, saving Johnny Sendako because Johnny Sendako didn't see CJ's face, this part wasn't stupid. This is not the part that, I'm, that, that I think was dumb. You know, CJ had to do this to get more information on Caligula's Casino, and he also had to do this to save Ken Rosenberg, um, uh, Macker, and Kent Paul, because if Johnny didn't make it, the Ferrellis would have probably declared war, or the Leones, and would have had, um, they would have had uh, all of them whacked there. Alright, who's messing with Ferrelli business? Yeah, who's got a death wish? Yeah, you better shut up. Hey, 
Hey, Johnny, how you feeling? I didn't think he was gonna be discharged till tomorrow. But anyways, um, after it, Ken Rosenberg tells CJ that he wants to go and meet Johnny. And CJ is kind of uncomfortable with it, but ends up driving him there. Now, here's the part coming up where it's the dumbest, dumbest thing that CJ has done. So Ken Rosenberg tries uh, to get CJ to come in there with him. CJ clearly doesn't want to go in there because he knows he's going to recognize him, that it's going to be bad. Uh, but uh, Ken Rosenberg pushes him and says, please come in with me. And for some reason, I don't know why, CJ agrees to go with him and then this happens. What's going on? Did you forget something? No, look, you go on in, I'm away. Uh, look, you gotta come with me this once. If I pull this off, I can carry on. I know I can, but please, you gotta come with me. I, I, I'm gonna squirt my ass all over the floor. Just this once, please, please, please. Okay, please. okay, chill. <laughs> Shit, this can't look good. Listen, everything gonna be okay. Just remember, you the boss. I'm the boss? I'm the boss. I'm the boss! I'm the boss! I am the boss! Hey, boys. Tell your boss that Ken Rosenberg is here to see him. Ken who? K K Ken Rosenberg. <gasps> Ken Rosenberg! The guy that runs this town! So, uh, how's Johnny? Hey, he's doing much better. Huh. Yeah. He ate something this morning. Oh! Mm -hmm. Hey, Ken! Oh! My oh, Christ, this fucking thing. <laughs> Ken, come stay. Uh, how you doing? Pretty good. And you? Uh, I still got a little bit of the night terrors, a uh, <laughs> touch of diarrhea, but I'll get through it. Huh, diarrhea. Cool. And yeah. uh, who's this? How you doing, Johnny? It's fucking him. It's him. Oh, oh my head. Oh, God. It's him. It oh! My heart. My heart. Damn, that nigga fucked up. So Johnny has a heart attack and dies, and then the Sindakos blame uh, him for it from Molotovs. They try to trap them in the uh, meat factory, and CJ and Ken Rosenberg have to fight their way out, and CJ has to pretty much wipe out whatever's left of the Sindako family. Why CJ thought this was a good idea, I never understood this. Maybe he was trying to give Ken Rosenberg some confidence, um, uh, maybe he was hoping that Johnny would not recognize him, but it was just still such a bad idea. Why would you go and see a mob boss, but not just a mob boss, you would go and see the mob boss that you scared nearly half to death. You put into a coma, and he just um uh and he just got out of the coma, got out of the hospital, nearly got killed. Um, so the guy's you know in a pretty bad state, and you're gonna go and see him now. Like, why would you think that's that's a good idea? I don't understand it. But fortunately, CJ and um and uh, Ken Rosenberg did fight their way out, and CJ did end up using this to his advantage. So even though um even though it was a stupid situation, they got himself and they nearly got killed. He did end up wiping out the Sindakos, which did actually make robbing Caligula's casino easier. And because of this, the Ferrellis actually thought that Salvatore was actually the one who actually had the uh, Sindakos wiped out. Declared war on Salvatore, and then afterwards, CJ manipulated the situation to help Salvatore wipe out the Ferrellis. Only Salvatore was left, which made it much easier to actually rob the casino in the end. So CJ, even though he did do a stupid thing, he did actually play the situation right to its end but but like i said this is a dumb thing going to see a mob boss that you nearly scared half to death and right in front of his guys to at, at the meat factory you're not gonna be happy to see you like i said but uh, thank you guys for watching i hope that you guys enjoyed the video if you did drop a like and i'll see you guys on the next one take care everyone have a wonderful day guys